What is going on guys? Welcome back to Lean Ripped and Healthy. It's been a while since we recorded an episode, but it, it's, uh, it's been a good, uh, for good reasons, I can say. So I'm excited to get back on the mic here and uh, share with you guys uh, someone who has an amazing story, someone who uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure a lot of you can relate to certain parts of the story um, and really, really take away some key points because he's come a long way and he's got uh, uh, a lot of experiences and lessons to share with everyone. So um, Anad Jominputra, and I'm probably saying his name wrong, but we're going to correct it on the, on the intro anyways. Um, so what's going on, my friend? It's good to have you here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah, anytime. And I think we met back in August. That's I right. I want to say August. Yeah, August uh, in Toronto. August in Toronto, and uh, and I remember you sharing your story about mm -hmm. like your journey, and then we talked a little bit more after that on the phone, mm -hmm. and it's it's pretty interesting. Um, so I guess you kind of kick things off. You share where you were at six years ago. I know it's been quite a, a few years in the making, but where were you at like six years ago? Sure, uh, I would say it's been even more than six years. But growing up, I was always this really chubby kid and always insecure about my weight and because of being overweight and I, I actually I was born in the United States like in California but uh -huh. my parents are from India so I grew up in India for the most part because my parents moved back when I was like three years old gotcha. gotcha but growing up as far as I can remember I was always overweight and I was always insecure about it and always you know I lacked a lot of confidence because of it and then as even as a teenager I was just gaining weight over time and at one point even as a teenager I was almost 300 pounds wow and for m for a person of my size like my frame I, I don't I'm not that heavy naturally you know yeah. I, I get, weigh, to get some context how tall are you and how how much do you weigh now yeah I'm, I'm 5'10 I'm just about 160 pounds right now wow so you know eventually I lost almost half my body weight yeah um, and but it was a struggle you know they just being that fat well, wasn't good for my health but even outside my health you know i couldn't do the normal things that the other kids could do at my age you know like play sports yeah um wear you know good fitting clothes things like that you know uh, not having a lot of friends uh, always being insecure about how i'm looking and i think it's not because of uh, you know, a lot of people assume that just because a person is fat or out of shape that they're lazy or they're unmotivated or they just like to eat. Yeah. But there's there's a lot of things that go into this. Not so simple. Right. And in my case, it wasn't that I w wasn't like dedicated or I didn't want to change. In fact, I tried to change so many times because I've been on diets pretty much all my life. You know? Yeah. Even when, even before I was like even a teenager, my parents took me to like weight loss clinics to check me out, see what's going on. Wow. Um, and as soon as I turned 13, that's when I joined the gym because that was the minimum age to work out. And uh, I got some good success initially, you know, even though I had no idea what I was doing. And back then there was no social media, there was no uh, internet basically. Right, right. Um, but I just followed the advice of the local trainer. Gotcha. Um, got some decent results. But the problem is, you know, you ha I'm sure you know this, but we, we have to be consistent with these things, right? Yeah, that's the biggest thing, like consistency. That's what I like about your story is because like, you were consistent. You've been consistent for a long, mm -hmm. long time. Mm -hmm. And like to say six, seven, eight years, like the way you've been doing it, even more than that probably, yeah. uh, is, it speaks to a lot of like your habits mm -hmm. and it speaks to a lot of like, what the, the small things that are, are key to your success. Mm -hmm. So I, I really want to get into those, definitely. Um, I'm curious though, like when you started doing like, your parents took you to the weight loss clinics, right? Like mm -hmm. when you were younger, what were they saying mm -hmm. was the problem? So ba back then, you know, especially in India, it's the, we didn't have that culture of like really f focusing on going to the gym or working out. Yeah. So they were recommending stuff like, uh, you know, major, calorie drops, major changes in your diet, you know, you, you can't eat this, they give you a list of foods you can't eat. Mm -hmm. uh, instead of focusing on what we know now that actually works, you know, like yeah. making sure you're resistance training, eat your protein, control your calories, uh, eat your fruits and veggies, you know, things that are more sustainable. The basics. Yeah, yeah. Where, whereas what they were teaching was so extreme that it you can s stick to it for a week or so, but then it's 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 not possible to stick to just their list of foods and not enjoy anything else. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm curious there. You said, 
a few things. Resistance training. I'm sure a lot of people are wondering, like, what are you doing in the gym? Kind of like, what is the key to your success? Um, so I know you're, you're also the founder of Underdog uh, Strength. So I want to get into that as well. What, what kind of training do you typically do right now? So I'm a competitive power lifter. So my training is based heavily around the, the compound movements. So you got your squat, bench press, and deadlift. And these are the three competition movements. But other than that, I also work on accessory exercises to work on my weak points or you know build that complete physique. So I, my philosophy is definitely more power building. Mm -hmm. So combination of power lifting uh, and, and bodybuilding. I like that, cool, yeah. I like that. I've done phases like that, it's a lot of fun. So for those listening, don't worry, there's gonna be in the show notes and Nod's gonna provide some of his uh, templatized workouts mm -hmm. um, and share with you some tips and tricks in there. Um, let's continue with the story though. Inter so you're at, you're 13, you're going to the weight loss clinics, you yeah. or you still start at the gym. That's right. And you start to see some early success. Mm -hmm. And, and it's kind of walk me through, where were you at a couple of years into the gym? Like, yeah. what was it like? Did you plateau? What was going on after you spent like two years in the gym? Yeah, so even when I was 13, I started off at over 200 pounds body weight. Mm -hmm. And uh, initially, I think I lost about 10 kilos or so within a year, wow. a year's time. Uh, so definitely not an extreme weight loss, but it's still pretty significant. And I was like feeling good. I was looking good. You know, people in my school were noticing. Yeah. And um, I was also gaining a bit of strength, even though I wasn't doing serious strength training. It was more like circuit workouts. Right. Um, what are circuit workouts? For those curious, like what the hell is that? Like so in a circuit workout, you, you typically do... Uh, one exercise after the other mm -hmm. and and you, you 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 follow like let's say five six exercises in 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 order one after the other yeah and then you that's that counts as one circuit and then you go back and do it again gotcha so let's say you do one chest exercise one back exercise one leg exercise something like that and sure. just keep going in, in in rounds so it's not it's not what you typically see in a gym where you do sets and reps of you know certain exercise then you move on to the next yeah gotcha so you're seeing some success. Mm -hmm. People are starting to notice. Yeah. Um, what what happens? Like, do you plateau? What what's um kind of like mid teenage years for you like? Yeah. Uh, I don't think I plateaued. Um, I was. I was looking good. I was feeling good. But th then what happened was, I I I was just about to enter the tenth grade. Yeah. And uh, you know it's like, people. 10th grade is you supposed to be serious because you know that's like your last year of uh, school before you go to high school and you need to get good grades to get you know in, in, in India it's a little bit different gotcha okay. because it's school still. yeah gotcha. your school kind of ends at 10 yeah. and then you have something called junior college which is your 11th and 12th which is high school here right yeah but you need to transfer over and you need to get good grades to get into a good junior college ah okay uh, and then after junior college it's university gotcha so, so what part of India or where were you living in just so, little, curiosity. Yeah, I grew up in a city called Mumbai. Mumbai, okay, I've yeah. been Mumbai. Or uh, the old name is Bombay. Okay. Uh, but it's the largest city uh, and the financial capital of India. Ah, okay. So you were in the city mainly. Yeah. A lot of okay, in the city. Cool. Yeah. All right. I got some people listening in Mumbai, so shout out to them. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so you're, you're getting that transition to a new school now, mm -hmm. in in from ju to junior college. Right. That's right. And then, so what happens? What happens in that transition? So my my parents were like, I was living with my parents, and they were like, you need to focus on your studies for the tenth grade, and you know you can't be going to the gym every day, which yeah. I really enjoy. <laughs> so that kind of sucked. But you know they were like, you need to f focus on studies, and uh, back in India, it's like you go to school all day, and yeah. then you after school you go to other classes to make up for what the teachers didn't teach you. Yeah. <laughs> so so it, it's like. You know, by the time you get home, you have no time. And yeah. uh, and as soon as I stopped working out, I started to gain all this weight. Mm. And over time, by the time I ended the tenth grade, I, I was fatter than ever before. Wow! So it, it's called it's called like body fat overshooting, and yeah. it's very common for people to diet because uh, if you see the weight loss trends, it's not like people don't know how to lose weight, but they don't know how to keep it off. Yeah. And exactly. people go through these yo-yo diets. Yeah. And each time they try to diet, they end up fatter and fatter than before. Right. Because, you know, they, they diet down, but then their metabolic rate is kind of slowed down a little bit, right? 100%. And, and then they don't let the metabolic rate recover. And once you start eating again, it's like you're just going to keep piling on fat, you know? And if you look at the statistics, yeah, um, it's 
between like 95 and 97 percent of the people who try to lose a significant amount of weight gain it all back within three years so one to three years jeez okay so and that's it's interesting because like guys know on this who listen to this show they know like i've taken a break mm -hmm. and i've stepped back from my training to pursue other other interests in my business yeah. um so a lot of guys i feel like like have gone through that situation where they train hard they got a great physique well they're getting good results and then they stop and they slow down and they're like shit like i gotta worry about other things i'm getting yeah. married i'm getting i'm having kids yeah i'm starting a job i'm studying harder and um so what was that mental thing like what was kind of like the mental shift where like okay i'm i'm fatter now yeah I'm, I'm not in a good place how do i get back to where i was and even better what was the mental shift you know the it was like most people don't realize that whenever you want to do something significant, <clears throat> whether it's you want to lose a massive amount of weight, you want to start a business, it's going to be way harder than most people think. Yeah. And you got to be mentally prepared to be able to put in the work. Yeah. And most people aren't prepared. So, you know, people go in thinking, you know, oh, I'm going to go to the gym a few times a week. I'm going to eat better. Yeah. But it, it doesn't cut it oftentimes. Uh, you know, it might work a little bit. And for me, I tried a bunch of times. I got some results, but I wasn't like fully committed committed to it. Yeah. Uh, and it's like you know, people use the term massive action. Yeah. That's what you have to do. And eventually, I got so frustrated with the lack of results. Right. That uh, once I was on YouTube, and this is when YouTube was first starting, right? Yeah. And I started off even before like social media was there you know it was like i was going to bodybuilding.com and bodybuilding.com yeah, forums yeah me too <laughs> <laughs> and one of the first videos i saw that really um i resonated with on a personal level because there's also a lot of negativity on those forums right 100 percent. and yep. people are like you can't build a good physique without using drugs or steroids and oh, shit. A, basically anyone who looks better than you is on steroids yes. <laughs> so that was kind of demotivating because i grew up uh, watching like Arnold Schwarzenegger and uh, the mm -hmm. Rocky movies, Sylvester Stallone, but the, everyone was like, oh, they take drugs and you can achieve what they did. So right. that's kind of discouraging. But then I came across this video called uh, Inside the Life of a Natural Pro by Lane Norton. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what's a natural pro bodybuilder? Like I've never uh. heard this term before. And then I found out that it's a, it's a competition where people are tested for, uh, for drugs. Got it. And these guys had like impressive physiques. Yeah. But more importantly, even back in the day, they were all like what what we call like evidence based. Yeah. Um, they were, because if you don't use drugs or steroids, then you have to rely on something else to get results. <coughs> exactly. So yeah. you gotta you gotta make sure everything else is on point to maximize the results. And I'm like, this is it. You know, I found it. Gotcha. You know, I, I gotta learn from these guys. So the evidence base was kind of like the sift, like oh, like now I know I have a blueprint to follow, or I have like someone yeah. to model after, right? Hundred percent. Gotcha. Okay. And, and then I just started following these guys, but I I think the other you talked about the mental shift, right? Mm -hmm. I was watching this video of Arnold, and you can still find it on YouTube. It's called Still Pumping. Yeah. So it's like a follow up to Pumping Iron. Yeah. But many years later, because Arnold is still work, still working out and still putting in the work, and he was he said something that really hit me hard and he said if you want to be a champion then you got to be willing to do whatever it takes you know yeah. no excuse it yeah and that that those three words right whatever it takes yeah that's what i repeated to myself you know this i want to do this and i'm going to do whatever it takes that's and that's hard i want to make sure that's that's saved um and i'm gonna pause because i have a low battery so i want to make sure i had that had that part stop all right, so we'll record. I just get that part. That's really, really interesting. Because here's the thing: you don't know this about me. No one knows this about me. Uh -huh. um, when I was in college, I had a major breakup, and it caused me to pour myself into the gym. Watching Arnold Schwarzenegger was the same way. How I really felt like, holy fuck, like, I got to change everything. Oh yeah. Until I got into bodybuilding, wow. and it was those. It was a video where he said he was in the. He was in the. He was in the army at the time. He was working out really hard, and he yeah. was like, "Fuck, I'm gonna miss that bodybuilding competition. I'm never. My life's gonna be over." Yeah. Because it was that bodybuilding competition that kind of took his career to another level, where mm -hmm. he got recognized for the first time. And um, he said it in the video. He was like, "Whatever it takes, I will do." That's right. And that was literally like kind of like the ma the mantra of like my business, yeah. like and, and and fitness as well. Like yeah. whatever it takes, I'm just gonna do. We eat six meals. I can eat six meals. If I can eat one meal, I can eat one meal. Yeah. Like, so that's really interesting, guys. We have a we have a, a synergy there between yeah. Arnold and kind of like help catapult that. So that's the mental shift. 
Um, I will link those videos in the show notes as well for people who are wondering, like, those, those are really powerful videos. Um, all right, so Anad, so you found, you must say your, your name wrong, Anad. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, we found, you found Lane Norton's evidence-based, life of an evidence-based uh, athlete. Uh, um, what's it called? Inside the life it's, of a natural pro. There we go. Yeah. There we go. And then you started training. So what were some of the habits you took away from that video and kind of laying in, in general that people mm -hmm. can apply? You know, the, the number one shift that I made and what I observed from the best natural bodybuilders is that they all trained heavy, uh -huh. uh, you know, using the compound movements. So even though they might not have been doing power lifting typically, yeah. but they were like really focused on heavy lifting. Yeah, and what's heavy? Can you define heavy? Yeah, so for, for most people, uh, it, if, you, if you look at traditional reps in bodybuilding, they do like lighter weights for like higher reps, you right. know, like 12 to 15 reps. But for the natural guys, most of them were training a bit heavier in, in terms of six to eight reps or even like four to six reps at times, gotcha. or even doing sets of five. And what kind of percentage of their max? We'll just go for one rep max, yeah. assuming everyone knows a one rep max. If not, there'll be a show note, a calculator in the show notes for that yeah. as well. Um, but one go uh, percentage wise, that way people can kind of dial this in for themselves. I think ar around like 70 to 80% is a yeah. good, good number for that rep range. Yeah, okay. Yeah, for most people. And uh, it's not like you have to train heavy all the time, but the emphasis is, is on getting stronger yeah. because progressive overload is what's gonna build your muscle. Yeah, so. it's funny, the last year I've really applied that principle, just mm -hmm. progress. I've had the same workout, yeah. no lie not, not for like a year plus, probably like a year and a half. Um, it's the same fucking workout. Yeah. <laughs> like only thing I do is increase the weights. Um, yeah. Take it dialed back a little bit, but um, so you see, that was the biggest thing. You're training heavy. You're mm -hmm. learning how to train heavier. Mm -hmm. um, what about in the kitchen? Because I find mm -hmm. you're very, you're a, a very, you're a creature of habit. I studied. I've, you've talked. We talked a bit mm -hmm. behind camera. Mm -hmm. um, what are some of the habits you've taken away? You've really applied to the physique you're at now mm -hmm. um, that people can really can, can can use. Yeah, definitely. Habit is number one. But one one thing is. Habits form over time. Yeah. So a lot of people try to make extreme changes over time. They yeah. change their diet completely, uh, you know, from one day to the other, and they expect it to stick, but it usually doesn't. Yeah. So you gotta take gradual steps, you know, one step at a time. Yeah. So maybe you can take your existing diet and make some small changes to it. Hundred percent. Maybe you know just eat the same foods, but reduce. The, the quantity that you eat, you know, portion control. Right. Or maybe reduce, uh, identify what foods are high in calories, what foods are low in calories, uh, what foods are high in protein, what yeah. foods are high, high in fats and carbs, and just play around with the quantity. So you're not changing your diet, meaning the actual foods you eat. Right, But right. You, you're kind of <coughs> modifying the quantities a little bit. Gotcha. So you still feel like you're on the same diet, but your caloric intake and your macros will change over time and it doesn't have to be perfect you know you can tweak it over time yeah but habits take time to form how and long in, in your in your experience everyone's different of yeah. course but how long do you, like i know you work with clients personally privately That's right. online yeah. um what uh what do you recommend for your clients typically starting off to help them with these habits i would say on average even if it's like a small change it, it takes like a month or so to for them to really get used to it mm -hmm. and f start forming those habits yeah at least a month i would say got it and um this, i like that whole the whole analogy or the thing you're doing here like you're just keeping the same diet mm -hmm. but you're just reducing it down yeah. so for instance people listening uh if what i do i used to have grande coffees from starbucks now yeah. i have a tall yeah and that automatically reduces the calories oh, same, yeah. same drink yeah. but it's a tall coffee now um yeah. What other small tips? Because I think you're you're quite a, a treasure trove when it comes to like very actionable tips and, yeah. and habits. Um, so what else for you that in terms of the kitchen, we'll keep it on nutrition yeah. that uh, you found helpful over the years? Lately, I found for most people is that something like intermittent fasting works really well. Okay. Because again, that's a way of reducing your calories. Yeah. It's, there's nothing like magical, I would say about it. But let's say you're eating four meals in a day and you cut out one meal. Yeah. You're cutting out 25% of your, dad, your yeah, meals, total meals, right? So if you eat, let's, I'm assuming, let's say you eat the same number of calories for each meal. You know, let's say you're eating 2000 calories a day and each meal is 500 calories. You just cut out one meal. You're good. And you're in a 500 calorie deficit. Yeah. And you can lose like <coughs> up to a pound a week. Got so, it. And it still feels like you're uh, f eating the same diet for the most part. Yeah. Um, so something like that's been working really well in terms of behavior changes. You know, you, I, I, just, I just tell my clients, 
replace your regular breakfast with let's just have like a protein shake. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's like a modified intermittent fasting. Technically, you aren't fasted. Yeah. Uh, but protein is also like kind of satiating, fills you up a little bit, and something that like that works really well. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. And and so I want to get back into the story here. You found Lane Norton. Yeah. You were at that a little bit later than that. You were. Before that, you were like at a large body weight, mm -hmm. biggest you've ever been. Yeah. What's the journey from now, from then to now? Because mm -hmm. now you're standing at 160 pounds. Yeah. You're, you're a competitive bodybuilder or competitive powerlifter. Yeah. Um, what has, what, what like, uh, kind of walk me through that scenario mm -hmm. and how you got from there to where you are now. Yeah. And uh, again, it's it's like a it was a very learning process. You know, it's not like I had this perfect plan in place. Right. And back then, you know, what I do right now, online coaching wasn't didn't even exist for the most part. Yeah. Because even guys like Lane Norton were only do, only coaching pro bodybuilders. You know, so it, it wasn't mm. accessible to the everyday person. Yeah. Uh, so there was a lot of trial and error. You know, because seeing what <laughs> works for it doesn't work for you. Because again, you know, as a coach, I know that there's an individual difference. Um, but my what I did was I just took massive action even though it wasn't perfect I just I just went for it so I, I knew what I had to do I had to control my calories yeah I had to make sure I got enough protein uh, I had to do my cardio to create that for the caloric deficit what and kind of cardio did you, did you do so back then I was doing I didn't have a lot of time to do cardio and I definitely wanted to focus more on weight training so the kind of cardio I did was I don't recommend that form of cardio anymore mm -hmm. but we have like different intensities of cardio right? yeah you have low intensity steady state cardio or less yeah and then on the other side you have hit cardio yeah. high intensity interval training I was do doing something in the middle which is miss mm -hmm. cardio yeah m medium intensity steady state where you if you want to look at a you know, s uh, like less cardio can be something like walking. Yeah. Uh, hit can be like doing sprints. Like all out sprints, 100, 100 meter dashes. That's right. Like, yeah. And miss is more like jogging. Yeah. So it's like medium intensity, just like, you know, medium intensity when it comes to lifting weights, right? Exactly. But I used to do, I since I didn't have enough time, I used to set a timer yeah. every time I went into the gym. And I would set a timer between, uh, you know, let, let's say around 20 minutes. Yeah. And I would give myself that time limit to do cardio, but every time I would try to beat my performance within the 20 minutes. Gotcha. Okay. So, you know, today, let's say I, I jogged a mile. Yeah. Tomorrow I'm going to do 1.1 miles. Gotcha. So over time, that, that, that definitely helps in terms of improving your fitness. But in studies, what they found is if you try to push, become better at cardio or endurance yeah it's going to affect your strength training got it so that's so, that's a big thing people who are focusing on yeah. on getting stronger they don't want to do too much obviously too much of cardio yeah not push it you know like i was because i was trying to push my cardio performance within yeah. the 20 minutes you know trying to beat my time over time and then and while lifting weights i was trying to push the weights and progress overload there so it's it, these are like different energy pathways so there's definitely what they call like the interference effect yeah and it's not like you can't get good at both but if uh, i would say if you want to focus on building muscle and getting stronger then that should be your main focus right so if you do something <coughs> like low low intensity cardio it doesn't really challenge your body but it's uh, in terms of your building your uh, endurance or things like that but yeah. It's uh, it's a good way of getting more activity and burning calories. Agreed, agreed. I think so too. Yeah. And you're when you were in that stage of your life, though, you were definitely kind of lose the weight more aggressively. That's right. Than you were then. So for those, I guess, if someone's like in that scenario, they want to lose a lot of weight. Yeah. And strength's good, and they want to get stronger, but they're most like they just want to look fat, like less fat, like yeah, leaner. With what would you recommend in terms of cardio? Uh, I would say, for most people, just just start walking more. Right. Uh, it doesn't even have to be anything like you have to go out walking. You know, if you're working in an office, just stand up every every two hours and go for like a 10 minute walk. Yeah. And if you do that like four times a day, that's almost like 40 minutes of walking right there. Gotcha. Um, and other than that, walking is also really good for, you know, your mental health. They found it has benefits. It's great for your back health. Yeah. Uh, if, even if you study people like back experts like Dr. Stuart McGill, yeah. he recommends something called a 10 minute walk. Oh. So it, it's really good for your back health. Uh, I would say walking is the first place to start, definitely. And then if you, if you want, uh, you can add in like one or two sessions of HIIT cardio per week. Yeah, what uh, does that look like? So f for most people, you can, it's the best way to get started is just to go to a gym. 
So I don't recommend most people to run outside because running itself is a skill and you know people get injured. Yeah, yeah. If including not. like runners actually get injured. Like, <coughs> so and especially if you're overweight, you, you probably don't want to do that. But just go to a gym and find uh, any cardio machine that offers some sort of resistance. Yeah. So it could be a stationary bike, an elliptical machine, anything like that. Or you could even do like if your gym is like a hardcore gym and they have like prowlers and sleds. Yeah. That works. That works as well. And all you do is intervals, right? So my favorite is I probably use something called the assault bike, which is. Uh, oh, I like that. Yeah, I, it's the one with the big fan. Yeah, it's the one. Oh with the fan. yeah, I love that. I used to have, my old gym used to have that. I love the damn yeah. things that. That sled, sled pushes, all out. And yeah. then rest thirty seconds. Yeah. So you go all out for like fifteen to twenty seconds. Yeah. And then you rest for. 100 to 120 seconds so about two minutes right and you so that counts as one interval and you can start with like five intervals and build up from there but that's a great way of burning a lot of calories in a short time yeah i agree i love that i love that workout yeah gotta find an assault bike now you remind me yeah um all right so so transitioning to the story like when did you start becoming a competitive bodybuilder what did that do or competitive powerlifter mm -hmm. keep on messing it up um and uh and what did that do for your physique yeah, sure. So uh, I've been working out for so many years, but I never had that uh, a good amount of muscle mass, I would say, until yeah. I did powerlifting. Because, you know, in powerlifting, it's like uh, your performance matters, right? So yeah. it's very objective. Either yeah. you're getting stronger or you're not. So focusing on that performance was something very appealing. But I would say, uh, again, it was Lane Norton again. Because uh, he started powerlifting in the off season when he's not doing bodybuilding, because mm. it gave him something to compete in and something to keep him motivated while he's not prepping for a show. Yeah, and and you know, uh, as and just during that time, raw powerlifting was becoming very popular on social media. Yeah, so it was. Uh, I would say it's about five years ago, and I was training at a commercial gym, and I found out that uh, there's a powerlifting seminar. Uh, in uh, close to where I lived so I thought I thought I should check it out you know and it was hosted by this guy named Dan Green mm. which uh, he has he's a huge name in powerlifting and I knew of Dan because Dan is one of the was one of the powerlifters back in the day that also had an impressive physique yeah you know he, he looks like better than most bodybuilders yeah. even though he's a powerlifter so I, I'm like I know who Dan Green is I've seen him online so I should and it was a free seminar so I drove down from San Francisco to Mountain View yeah. uh, to a gym called Boss Barbell, which is Dan's gym. And as soon as I stepped, fo I stepped foot in that gym, I was like, this is where I want to be. Because I was so sick of training at commercial gyms where yeah. you can't even lift heavy and <coughs> people look at you funny and you can't find the equipment you want. People yeah. curling in the squat rack. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, this is where I need to be. And <coughs> Dan, of course, you know, gave an amazing seminar. Right. And that was my beginning of my powerlifting journey, just joining Boss Barbell. Gotcha. What's interesting is because, like, for you, you went into, you looked at Dan Green because he had a great physique. Yeah. And so he was, he was big, but he was also had a great, impressive physique. Oh, he wasn't, yeah. like, fat. He wasn't, like, overweight. Yeah. And I see the same thing with you now. Like, you've got a good physique and you're a powerlifter. Yeah. Which a lot of people, I think, uh, that's kind of like a, it's like a, it's odd. Yeah. Because powerlifters don't have the, they don't, you know, they're just not known for their physiques, right? That's they're right. Just known for, like, lifting heavy and wearing those weird this weird leotard thing. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, so how have you, how is your, your training style a bit different, I guess you would say, from, from other power lifters yeah. who aren't as lean, aren't as fit, they don't, they probably wouldn't go out um, to the beach yeah. in, in the summer. Yeah, so the thing about powerlifting is it's become so competitive in recent years mm -hmm. that you can no longer be a fat guy. Unless you compete in the super heavy weights where there's no, there's no, no weight limit, yeah. then you want to be <coughs> as big as possible, right? Um, because powerlifting at the end of the day is a sport where we have, you have weight classes. And uh, let me ask you this, if, if you have two people who are in the same weight class, but one person is 20% body fat, the other person is 12% body fat, and they weigh the same, who's gonna move more weight? And they're the same weight? Yeah, same weight. Oh, the 12% the guy all day. Yeah, because he's, yeah. he's got more muscle, right? Yeah, exactly. Because. Um, I mean, fat can help you move some weight because of the mass, but, but only up to a certain extent, right? Right, right. Muscle's obviously, that extra 6 or 8% mu muscle yeah. mass is going to be the big difference. And if you look at the top <clears throat> bodybuilders that are not super heavyweights, they're all like really ripped and lean. Yeah. Like, 
you could la look at Dan Green or any of those top guys, you know, Larry Wheels. Yeah. Uh, uh, all those top guys right now are just crushing it and, and they look like bodybuilders. Right. Like they might not have the perfect symmetrical physique, yeah. but they, they certainly have the muscle mass. Right, by, by like uh, general population standards, they're absolutely amazing. Oh yeah, <laughs> totally. And uh, the, <clears throat> I think the best thing about powerlifting is that even if you're not a powerlifter, the focus is on the actual performance. Yeah. So it, it, it shifts your focus from looking at your physique and wondering if my physique is improving to look at the, looking at the solid numbers. Yeah. Are my lifts improving? Yeah. Because uh, I can tell you that your muscle mass will come as, it's almost like a side effect of becoming a better athlete yeah. or becoming stronger. So as long as your performance is going up, and uh, you know this is how I coach my clients as well because a lot of them are are kind of anxious. You know, am I am I right. building muscle? Because right. you can't see muscle changes every day in the mirror. No. But I, I I tell them to trust the process because I can see their numbers. Right. They send me the training logs every single week, and over time, if you see their pictures from you know they might not see the change themselves but i have them take like before and after pictures yeah. and i can see that let's say they added like 50 pounds to the squat in 12 weeks or so yeah um you can see in in 12 weeks the physique looks different right for sure right that that's that's big mm -hmm. um i'm curious as to because earlier you mentioned the word called word the word of power building mm -hmm. um could you explain that is that how you train right now or like how you train your clients a hundred percent, you know, so power building is combining, like I said, power lifting and bodybuilding. Yeah. And I, f I feel both people can learn from each other. So for, for bodybuilders, it, the thing is, if you only train in a bodybuilding rep range, yeah. which is light to moderate weights and do a lot of reps, it's great for building muscle. It's, it's very efficient. You get a lot of training volume in. But then eventually you're going to hit that plateau and you're no, no longer getting stronger. Yeah. And you don't have that progressive <coughs> overload component to it it's just your, your body's acclimated to it it doesn't yeah. really change at all yeah okay. yeah so so with powerlifting since the main focus is on getting stronger and progressive overload a lot of bodybuilders can benefit from getting stronger especially in the lower rep range so even though the lower rep range like you, you do like three to five reps is not considered as a bodybuilding rep range yeah it's gonna make you stronger to the point where you're gonna be able to perform your higher rep sets with more weight Gotcha. So that the strength is going to carry over across your medium to light weights as well. So uh, let's say your your three rep max goes up, or yeah. even your one rep max goes up, you're going to be able to do more reps with even like five reps, or you know right. more weight with like five reps, eight reps. So all those rep ranges. See, you see, you're benching 185 at eight reps. Now you yeah. get stronger in your one rep. Yeah. Now you, uh, uh, theoretic in theory, you're going to be able to lift more at eight reps, now yeah. maybe maybe 195, yeah. maybe 200, yeah. which over time becomes like, allows you to, to continue that progressive overload, yeah. right? 100%. And that gets you stronger and gets you bigger. 100%. And at the same time, power lifters can learn from bodybuilders because uh, maximizing your muscle mass within a certain weight class matters. And you know, bodybuilders know how to build muscle. Yeah. But I would say the other thing that bodybuilders know how to do is get lean. Yeah. And uh, <coughs> typically, uh, I've, I've worked with some of the best powerlifting coaches out there and they, they aren't really into like bodybuilding or nutrition much. Yeah. So, but <laughs> what I've learned through all these top natural bodybuilders is that they know how to diet down, you know, they know how to, uh, you know, set the right calories, macros of that thing. They know how to get lean. Yeah. So, a lot of bodybuilders can learn about body composition, you know, uh, building more muscle and getting leaner f from bodybuilders. So when you combine both of them, it's like the, you get the best of both worlds. Gotcha. So if, uh, walk me through kind of, you take a new client in, he wants to get leaner, he wants to get stronger. Um, he's doing bodybuilding style workouts right now. What would be the first step for him to take to, and he's eating, uh, let's just say an average diet, right? Yeah. Like he's not, he's eating some healthy foods and then uh, you know, weekends he's going crazy. Yeah. What would be his first step to, to change, to make change, he can change today? The first step would be to stop going out on weekends. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm Good just, point. <laughs> although I've done that for a yeah. while, you know, <laughs> you kind of go like become a monk and yeah. you know, do anything. But yeah. it's not sustainable, right? We got to find a good balance between, yeah. um, you got to live your life as well. Yeah. Uh, one thing would be, for the most part, 
uh, try try the, the best thing is if you can find a way that you can control your calories like you know people might tell you oh, you need to go on a keto diet or you need to try this diet yeah but if it doesn't work for you specifically then it's not gonna work right so if you gotta find something where that's gonna allow you to restrict your calories whether you want to try intermittent fasting if you find that's easiest for you or if you're a fan of flexible dieting you still want to be able to enjoy everything you eat um, but you, you want to able be able to control your calories and macros right. right or if you're if you're like you know I need a meal plan so that works for people as well I just want to eat the same thing every day so first thing is you gotta think about what what actually works what's going to work for you in the long term what's sustainable for you in terms of nutrition in terms of nutrition okay uh, other than that i would say just learn the basics learn about calories how many calories you need for most people if you work out you can simply multiply your body weight by in pounds by 14 to 16 14 to, to 16 yeah to find your maintenance calories so body weight times 14 to 16 typically if you're working out what three to four days a week yeah got it so you've listened to this and it's like three to four days a week you're working out right now you want to say like how many calories do I actually need? A yeah. good barometer yeah. is fourteen to si so your body weight like one fifty times fourteen to sixteen. Yeah, give you the range. That's right. Um, switching over to training, let's just say they're doing like set of the bodybuilding stuff. Maybe they're yeah. doing one or two long jogs or yeah. long like medium state cardio. Yeah, miss. Uh, what would you change there? I would say if if you if you go into a gym like four times a week, let's say most that's reasonable for most people. Mm -hmm. Uh, a, a split that typically works well is like an upper lower split for that. Yeah. And uh, so you do, let's say, upper lower. So Monday is upper, Tuesday is lower. You take a break on Wednesday. Thursday is upper again. Friday is lower again. Uh, I would say you you can do one of those. Each one of those upper and lower workouts a little bit heavier. Yeah. So maybe try to stick to like four to six reps, and then the other workout. You can even do the same workout, but just do more reps this time. So do like s between six to eight or eight to twelve reps. Got it. But you doing you doing heavy days, and then you doing lighter bodybuilding style days. Right. To combine it, and then in terms of cardio, I I wouldn't miss can be like miss cardio is fine, but don't overdo it. Yeah. So instead of that, uh, on your off days, just put just do like uh, five to seven intervals of hit cardio got it and if you don't want to go to the gym again then just do it after your workout okay yeah um <clears throat> now with you i know you've got a you got a program coming out yeah. and i want to definitely talk about that a second um what what's it called and also kind of walk me through maybe like a, a taster of it sure like, yeah i have a program coming out it's called the power shred mm -hmm. which takes the best power building principles that, that I teach and I've learned over the years, combined with a, a, a flexible diet program yeah. that you can use to fit your lifestyle. And this program is designed to do, to do two things at the same time. It's designed to help you lose fat yeah. and build muscle at the same time. Gotcha. To build the ultimate lean and strong physique is yeah. what I focus on. And who's it for really? Like what kind of guy is this for or gal maybe? What kind of, like where would they be at right now, I guess? Uh, I, I would say first of all it's, it's for anyone who's willing to put in the work because that's the number one thing right because it's, it's definitely not an easy program okay um, it's you, you need to be dedicated and you need to be able to dedicate at least four days to train in the gym uh, you could be a complete beginner because I have different levels in that program so when you first start the program is you're gonna do the beginners version of it and then you do that for at least four weeks before moving on to the more advanced version of it. Cool. So I've, I've definitely kept in mind all levels, um, you know, like a beginner to intermediate. Right. So it's perfect for that level. Got it. It's such an interesting thing. I like you did that because so many guys would come to me uh, when I was doing a lot of online coaching and say like, oh, I want to build muscle, but I also want to lose this gut. Yeah. I'm sure you get that a lot too with your clients. All the time. <clears throat> and uh, it, it's interesting because like there are ways to do it, but like, Traditionally, it's hard to. Mm -hmm. um, so I like what you did with the program. Um, what else, in terms of uh, in terms of things that they should know? What mm -hmm. can what can what, I want to really make this actionable for the audience? Yeah. Like, what would you tell that person who's listening to this, who's kind of in a situation where you were yeah. a few years ago with a lot of weight, body fat to get off? Yeah. Um, what would you tell them? I would say ever since I shifted my focus to strength training as my main form of training, my body just started to change everything else falls into place um, but you gotta find uh, in, anything that you do whether it's a workout what time you work out what foods you eat what supplements you take uh, you gotta be 
you got to do something that you can stick with for a long time because it's going to take a while. Yeah. And it's probably going to take longer than you expect. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, even though I, I was reasonable with my expectations, I was not trying to lose weight overnight, but it still took me way longer than I even anticipated. So it's probably, you're probably never going to reach your dream physique because that's right. also going to change over time. It's going to always be out ahead of you, yeah. right? It's like dangling carrots, like yeah, a dangling so, carrots. So I would say focus more on the process that, that will get you to the goal. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I like that you used competitions and stuff to, to do that idea of bodybuilding and it gives you like a timeline. Oh, yeah. Um, I think that's really important, right? Yeah. It keeps you motivated, you know, yeah. like just having something to look forward to. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Well. Anaj, uh, where can people find you? Where can they kind of connect with you and, and learn more about the program and everything else? Uh, sure, yeah. So, yeah, my, my, br my, my brand is known as Underdog Strength because I like to teach people that you may be an underdog in your life, but mm. that's actually your biggest strength mm -hmm. because when you come from a situation of adversity, yeah. that actually makes, makes you stronger over time. So that can be your biggest strength if you know how to use it and it. overcome all the challenges that you have. And that's on YouTube? Yeah, so you can find me, my website is underdogstrength.com. My YouTube is youtube.com slash underdogstrength, all, all one word. Mm -hmm. uh, or, or you can find me on Instagram at underdog.strength. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you can connect me, connect with me on any of those platforms. And uh, you know, if you have any questions, just send me a DM, I answer all of them. Cool. Or leave a comment on my YouTube. And you'll answer them. Yeah, cool. 100%. Anna, uh, thank you so much, brother. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Louis. Yeah, yeah, thanks for having um, me. Every, guys, everything in the show notes, everything you discuss here will be in the show notes, so check those out. And uh, I will have this linked up on my Instagram as well as my email list, so for those who are checking that out. Um, other than that, man, I really appreciate it, so thank you. Thank you so much.